For all our listeners on Glow Time Radio, I'm sitting here with the very, very lovely Jenny DeVoe. Jenny, would you like to say uh, hi to everyone on Glow Time Radio? Hello, everybody, and I'm really happy to be here. And uh, we've got no planned uh, anything that we're going to talk about, which is my favorite kind of thing yes. in the world. So for all of you um, that are not familiar with Jenny's music, Jenny has got a mix of country, rock, blues, very, very versatile. Yeah, it's kind of like a singer-songwriter folky thing that I do where I write mm-hmm. it on guitar. And then the things I grew up listening to were Billie Holiday, Nina Simone, oh, Aretha yeah. Franklin, Gladys Knight. And so everything has a soul-infused way yeah. that I deliver vocals. And, and it's, um, yeah, I think it, it's hard to pinpoint the genre. But that's... But that's a good thing. That's not it's a bad a good thing. thing. And sometimes, you know, being typecast in a genre really limits what you want to do, and it gets difficult to break out of that. Absolutely. Yeah, especially with Big Label. They were trying to imagine me and kind of how to deliver me in a mm. package. Yeah. Mm. It was almost like talking to a bank person. <laughs> so if you just get flattered by the fact that they want to sign you and there's no big money mm-hmm. incentive at the front end, then very well you could just be kind of collected yeah. and set on a shelf. And that That's happened right. to some of my favorite artists who had already been really, really who was that? big. Patty Griffin. Mm. She, who I think is married to Robert Plant now, who is, I'm, I'm a huge fan of both of those. Mm. She's from folk. He's from Led Zeppelin. And mm. this is uh, the spirit of the way she writes and her voice. It's like, who would ever put a Patty Griffin I, I was gonna record say, on a show? How the hell do those two people get together? Nice, isn't it? It's very cool. Yeah. But music does that. It's Music is They actually, have a language they must have yeah, just met is. and been like it's a common denominator yeah, for, for everyone i, I, I totally so. agree so you got started when you know i really always wanted to do what i'm doing i had parents in the church mm-hmm. mom church choir director and i was always picturing myself doing this but i was super shy uh growing up so you were shy i was super shy so music got you out of that that's a good thing i don't know i think ultimately partying and drinking in high school got me out of that but it was like sort of a crutch to coming out of my shell mm-hmm. So I, I've gone through a, a lot of evolution where I was super shy, and then uh, once I started doing music, the minute I moved to Indianapolis, I was in a blues band. So I got played at the Slippery you. Noodle. Oh well, yeah. that's my favorite place. Yeah. So how you'll be very pleased we mentioned the Slippery <laughs> Noodle again. It was a blast. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It's a very cool place, and its reputation it is huge. There are bullets in the walls I know. from there the history go. of just you know what's gone on here in America. That's in right. Music. Now, yeah. why Indianapolis? Why did you? Move to Indianapolis? Well, it w- I'm from Muncie originally, which is just about an hour north of here, and um, my husband got a job here right out of college. Okay. So he's my partner in crime and everything mm-hmm. that we do. He bought me my first microphone. We sort of raised each other. We met in high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he does art for so his So you've been living. together about five years now. <laughs> You're so kind. <laughs> I wish no, you know, I, although I don't talk about my age, it has been a long evolution of writing and being honest with myself about what I really want to do. I travel a lot. I just live here because my roots got. Mm, you could ask me the same thing. So you lived in London and, and in yeah. Brussels. So why Indianapolis? Because that's where here we ended up. Here you are. Yeah, here's yeah. where you ended up. And well, I love England and I love yeah. your accent and I love all your people. I feel and, like. And I'm going to tell you the same thing because your okay. accent on this is going to be very, very cool. Okay. People are going to just melt. Accent. You have an accent. Um, You would never think that you do. I don't think I do either. But when we landed in England to go work with John Parrish, I felt some really weird familiarity there. It is as though I had landed at whatever my long, long time ago relatives Mm -hmm. are. They're from there. You felt at home there. I felt at home there. Mm -hmm. I saw people who I felt looked like my grandparents' grandparents. Yes. Yes. Except more so, I think. So you came to Indianapolis. Got into a blues band. You got into a blues band. What was the band called? No Regrets. And I think they're still out there. And But we were doing all covers. And Etta James and uh, Coco Taylor, um, all these people, I've gotten to open for. Joe Cocker, Ray Charles, Almond Brothers, Greg Almond oh, wow. on his last tour with his new That's band. That's pretty cool. It's a people think I'm blues, so I guess in a way I must be blues. Uh, Bonnie Raitt has talked about me from stage wow. and uh, said just some cool stuff. I've met her. Mm-hmm. She told me herself, she's like, I, I'd love to hear your songs because 
I don't record as many records do, as I'd like to. Do what you are with her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, you know. <laughs> Bonnie, I'm, we're going to yeah, do a you, duo. You're hearing this, Bonnie, if you happen to be in, in England. I would love to. I would love to. So, um, joined a blues band. Joined a blues band, but I was a writer. I wanted to start putting my, I wanted them to start doing my songs. Started my own thing. It was just that quick. I, I got my college degree in telecommunications with in counseling psychology with yeah you told me about that so i've got to ask you yeah counseling uh, addiction counseling yeah. music i don't see the connection here i didn't either and really i don't think that when you go through just a ton of stuff in life mm -hmm. whether people come into your life who have addictions mm -hmm. it's an interest to you whether it's conscious or subconscious you want to help Course. You want to? I mean, I b before I met my husband. I mean, I'm, I have definitely been watched over because I sabotaged my own life mm -hmm. very many times at a very young age. So I feel very lucky and blessed that that yeah, didn't take me it out. It didn't. It didn't go in a bad direction. Yeah, my interest. With, I mean, but so I, many of our friends have done that. I have a song called "Away," and I think many of my other songs just they kind of all just writing and insight and all of that stuff experiences. Mm. Everything goes into songs. So yeah. I'm always writing about love and relationships, and really, there's nothing else to write about. <laughs> I, I know, and they they become ninety percent of the of the music, but that's what that's what we're all about. You know, I I was sort of like reading light and shade. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Jimmy Page interviews. So mm -hmm. many things I'm learning from it. That's why I'm reading it for the second time. But about having a band that doesn't have too many different directions. It's like there's got to be one focus. Yeah. There's got to be one ship yeah, leader. That's right. and ship, and, uh, so when you're, when, you're doing, when you're doing that, Jenny, do you, and they, if one of them, you know, you, you've mentioned a really good guitarist that's working with you, do you let him have some leeway? And he said, I think this riff would work really well here. I'm totally open to what would be good here, yeah. Okay. And as I just will try to equate myself somehow with Jimmy Page, there has to be one person who decides at the end. That's right. This works, this doesn't. And mm -hmm. the great thing is, and I got some neat validation in that book, it's like everybody's from a different background mm -hmm. than mine. And I'm at a place now as a songwriter where I really respect space. Mm -hmm. and groove in my music. Mm -hmm. What I've learned from John Parrish is, and I think what I read about him when he was working with uh, Tracy Chapman is, if it doesn't have a purpose, it really shouldn't be there. It's it's funny you say that, because there I can't think of one name, but there are many songs that, and tunes that I listen to where you've got this guitarist, it's a fantastic guitar solo, but it doesn't actually continue with what's going on. Trying to be objective and be in the center of making a record is the hardest thing, I think, for an artist. People who really get it, and do the best. I love Sting. I love The Last Ship. It just, it kills me. I, I feel like I'm just going to keep trying to make the best record I can mm. make until I get it right. just want to feel something. So yeah. I'm trying to be that person and just get a little better at it each time. So you get your motivation, really, from what you see and hear around you. Like, a uh, lot of musicians do yeah. that. And you interpret it into a song, in, into lyrics and words. Yeah. yeah. How many songs have you written, roughly? Oh, gosh, hundreds. Hundreds? But now ask me how many good songs I've written. Uh, you're going to say one. <laughs> no, how many, all right, how many songs have you written that you say, I'm very, very, very happy with those songs? I'm very, very happy with every song I've put on my CDs. Good. At that time in my life. So if you listen to your very early music and you listen to the last one that you did, what do you see the difference between those, if there is any difference at all? I think the first thing I did, I had no vision of what the record outcome would be. Mm -hmm. And then when I got with John Parrish, he actually said, why don't you write down what you think your vision is? And we kept on task with that. And we built, he and I and one of my guitarists just went to Bath and we built it. And then uh, John was, he's so humble and so amazing. He kind of lets me sit in the captain's chair when he goes in and puts overdubs on and lets me kind of produce him. He let me mm -hmm. too, where I had them trying to sing like uh, Motown guys, but they oh. had their British accents and they were... <laughs> They were just now, that so will never adorable. Work. I don't know. It's, it's uh, on You Belong to Me. I tried to wrote, write a sort oh, of... Oh, I'm going to listen to that. So we're yeah. gonna we're gonna be playing. Um, Sandy is going to be playing some of your music. Best. I want one. I you want you it. to pick the music okay. that, that you want to play. There. Okay. And so it's going to be playing some of your music. Best. I want one. I you want you it. to pick the music okay. that, that you want to play. There. Okay.